it got cold last night. Um, it still is. I gotta go milk the goats. Last night after we did our live stream at 10-ish, Maya and I carried all the starts in. And I'm glad I did, because this morning I went out first thing in the morning, and it was, it was about 34 in the greenhouse. Which is still safe. Which they, they probably would have been okay, but the thing is is that the, the thermometer is right by the heater. And so I don't know if the other side of the greenhouse was 34 degrees and 32 degrees, and those guys would have been no more. What are you laughing about? Your outfit. <laughs> Listen. Listen, you are unapolo unapologetically dorky, it's okay. I'm not dorky, I'm colorful. <laughs> <laughs> I had a five-year-old tell me once about a, a matching uh, strategy called rainbow match and that is if you are wearing a color that is in the rainbow then it's okay it matches rainbow match rules Jessica lives by it's true I should have started this two weeks ago typically what you do when you're damn raising your kids is after they're two weeks old and they're then old enough to go through the night without eating, um, you pull the kids at night and you separate them from the mom and you come out in the morning and uh, milk and then put the kids back with the mom. So you milk once a day. And we're doing it this way because we travel so much. Basically, if you don't have anybody to milk your goats, you can just leave the kids on them and their supply dips just a little bit, but they don't get an infection because they're being milked out. Now, Maggie's kids are four weeks old. I should have done this two weeks ago. It's my first time to milk her. It's just been really cold and we've been really busy. She did awesome. I did not video milking her because I wasn't sure how she was gonna do. Now let's see if Nestle remembers as well as Maggie did. Come on, girlfriend. Get in there. Good girl. Pretty good. We have been feeding them out here the last couple of days, so I'm not surprised she knows how to hop up here. But neither Nestle or Mags was bred last year. So for both of them, this is the first time to be milked in like a year and a half. Maggie didn't kick or buck. She got a little bit squirmy after uh, her food started to get low, but otherwise pretty good. It's so cold out here. It's like, uh, it's about 25 degrees. Okay, not quite so smooth with her, but not too terribly bad. She got tired of it about halfway through. She caught the edge of the jar with her hoof. So this is milk for the dogs now. Once their hooves have come in contact with it, you definitely do not want to give it to any humans. Um, so a good bit of this is on the milk stand. Kit and George would be happy about that. However, I feel pretty good about this. Their supply will go up. Uh, she gave me pretty much a quart. Maggie gave me about half a quart. As I continue to milk them in the mornings and then put their babies on them, which will immediately start nursing, it's going to uh, trigger them to up their supply. Now I expect once this becomes regular and we're milking every morning that we will we'll be getting about a half gallon every morning off these two mamas while they're still also nursing their babies the rest of the day. And here's the peanut gallery. They all know their food is in here. Is that right? You're not even pregnant. You're not even pregnant. You are. You'll be in here soon. It'll be your turn before too long. Look how fluffy they are because it's cold. Look like a bunch of polar goats. One of my favorite things to do whenever friends come and visit is to teach them how to milk goats. I don't know why, like, I guess it's because it was something I wanted for so long that teaching other people to do it just brings me joy. <laughs> is that some sort of like projection of my own dreams on other people? I'm like, you gotta learn to milk a goat, it's awesome. I've actually been putting this task off because I've just been really busy with uh, vlogging and the garden and essential oils and uh, homeschool, just all the things in life. Uh, really, the garden has probably been the thing that's required the most because right now, starting everything, there's a lot of work that goes into it. But I just sat down to milk these goats and immediately it's just like this. Something in me that's tense just like relaxes. I don't know exactly what it is, but this is probably... It's one of the most therapeutic chores on the farm for me. I love milking. You have to be relaxed, you know? Like if you're just like frustrated or tense, the goats can feel it. But if you just take a minute to, to just take a breath and unwind, um, you just feel the animal relax. And I don't know, 
there's something very very cool to me about this chore and I just realized I haven't done it I haven't milked in months we've had everybody dry and so as soon as I started I was like oh yeah I love this it's weird to be doing it in this much clothes because typically well, our goat's kid in spring, we've never bred them this early. I don't think I've ever milked wearing like full on winter gear. Usually it's like shorts and a tank top, so that feels a little strange. Looks like George and Gary are both hanging out. <laughs> Y'all are so funny. Y'all see Charity right there staring at me? She was the biggest pain in the butt to break to the milk stand. Mayhem was pretty bad too. Mayhem, right here, y'all know her as my little doula goat. She was the first goat to ever kid on my farm. Whenever I got my goat herd, uh, seven of them were bred and she had gotten bred accidentally and we weren't expecting kids for another like three months and one day we came out and she was isolated. We were really new goat keepers and uh, we had a goat kid that day. And so we had not had time to uh, start stand training her. And oh my gosh, she was so rough. But Charity is another level. I actually didn't breed her this year because um, she's, she's really hard to keep weight on and I didn't feel good about where she was. So we decided to wait on her. But she's sweet. She's gotten a lot sweeter and a lot more personable. And hopefully next time that I have her in milk, she won't be such a handful. Look, Suki right here. She's going to kid here pretty soon. And it'll be her first time to be milked. So we're starting to work on stand training her. Mayhem and... Miriam are two of my best milkers. They are just perfect angels. Jermaine is coming to help me. They were fine. I mean, I had fed them a couple of times. Yeah, they were fine. I don't want it. This is why I don't live in Minnesota. <laughs> no. I was just remembering the time that we had a snake. There was a snake in our milk uh, stall last year, like a venomous snake. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a water moccasin. Anyway, I was thinking about that just now, and I was thinking about the cold. And I actually hate the cold so much that I live in a place where there are snakes that can kill you. And I would prefer that. Yes. Than the frigid north. Snake bite would be preferable than freezing to death. I mean, I'd rather neither, really. I mean... Neither is preferable, but I prefer to live in the place and take my risks with the snake than guarantee, like, negative degrees. I've actually never felt negative degrees. You have. You lived in North Dakota. Yes. I've never felt negative temperatures before. It doesn't get that cold here. <laughs> it's when the snot, when you go outside and you breathe, and the snot literally freezes all the way back into your sinus cavity. Oh, can't do it. Yeah. Uh, Ness put her hoof in this, so that's for the dogs. We'll put it on their food this Nestle. morning. <laughs> it is the next morning. Oh, and it's cold. I think last night was the last really, really cold night that we're supposed to have. Maybe still one more that's pretty cold tonight. All my plants are still in the house. Yesterday I intended to vlog more all day, but I don't know. Some days it's like I'm doing stuff like you know organizing the homeschool stuff getting rid of shoes cleaning out my closet and as riveting as that may seem it's really hard to talk myself into wanting to vlog that stuff because i'm like what am i what am i gonna do here yesterday was sunny and it is nearly 40 in here now uh which is not bad considering it's about 18 out there now i left these tomatoes out here these are like some extras of a kind that i'd already potted about 30 out of um, and I can't save every single one so I left these out here as an experiment to see how they did with the cold and obviously it hasn't dropped cold enough out here to kill them today's another sunny day tonight's another cold night not as cold as last night so I'm considering moving my plants back out today I don't know, I'm nervous. I'm taking Jackie to school. These last couple of intensely winter mornings, this always happens in March. Um, we've had such a mild winter, and Arkansas is pretty mild anyway. But these are hard freezes. This will likely kill off whatever was left in the garden. I've had stuff that survived all winter. Um, but this will probably kill it. These, these temperatures in the teens will probably do those in. It's okay, I'm about to replant, so. Saves me the agony of having to uh, 
you know, cut them short to make room for something else. This time of year, four years ago, I was headed to stay at my dad's house. I was massively pregnant with Ben. You remember that? You remember going and staying at Grandpa's? Because there was a forecasted ice storm the day before Benjamin was born. And um, Maya was concerned about us getting stuck at home and not being able to get off this ridge we live on because our four-wheel drive was broken. And uh, so we went and stayed with my dad. And it was a good call because um, I did go into labor the next day and there was uh, inches of ice and snow on the ground and my dad lives in town much closer to the hospital. So the kids went sledding all day and then I went to the hospital that night to have Sweet Benjamin. And after having had all my births natural, and having, you know, healthy, all natural birth. I was, you know, a birth person. I did birth photography. I super believed in it. Uh, Benjamin was really big and he was breached. And we didn't find out until I was very well into uh, labor because all of my appointments had been canceled leading up because of winter weather. And so yeah, ended up with a C-section on my fifth baby. And it was one of those things that just kind of shakes you but it shows you how much peace you can have in situations that um, you have no control over so I think about that the day before Ben's birthday every year especially when I wake up to a really wintry day